I want to talk a little bit about little stories. In Cree, we say atmun sa, the little stories that contribute to the big, big story. You couldn't leave the reserve unless you had a pass from the Indian agent. It never was embodied in law. It was not part of the Indian Act. The idea was in the air before 1885. This effort to introduce a measure to restrict people to their reserves applied to all First Nations on reserves in Western Canada. The pass and permit system is tied to that form of racialization that we've inherited. Who are called those damn Indians? They had to get a permit to go to our neighboring friends, relatives. I had to carry that around on my body. Indian agent was in their face almost every day. They'd send you to jail. We seemed to be quite happy to go on marginalizing these people and condemning them to slow death. It's not the way we treat other Canadians. They want to control our land. They want to control our resources. They want to control our people. And they want to do it in a nice way. It's about where we come from, where we are, and where we are going. This episode of ResX is brought to you by SEGA, the Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority. Welcome to ResX, an Indigenous lifestyle show for everyone. My name is Cadmus Delorme. And I'm Erin Goodpipe. We are your ResX co-hosts. So Erin, this episode is dedicated to Indigenous history. Oh, that's a big topic. What, so much in it. I know. What was the big moment for you? When well, you, you know, to... I realized that there's history before Columbus arrived. You know, right. as I got older, I started mm -hmm. to learn more about that, about the, mm -hmm. the creator and the way that, that Turtles Island was formed and the legendary right, stories. Right, right. It was an, an Indian, right? Like, I always thought it was an Indian. And then I, was, I heard East Indians and... And then I started to know about Columbus, and he thought he landed on India, and I was like, man, he's a crazy guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Such a huge history in there. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that I learned in my undergrad at the university is identity. Mm -hmm. Be proud of who you are. You know, I got my hair. And Never had long hair before. That old Cree braid, let's check Jeez, it out. I braided it myself, kind of mama sheesh any old way. <laughs> I start dancing power. Yeah, how's that been for it's you? It's not bad. I haven't won yet, but I'm not in it to win. Learning out. Kind of like a two by four when I'm out there, a little <laughs> stiff, yeah. but I'm getting it. <laughs> what do you dance? Uh, prairie chicken. Prairie chicken. Yeah, oh. so it's a lot of fun, but we're in for a really good episode. Yes, we are. Check it out, guys. Get out. Next up, we have the Glen Anaquad Memorial TP Racing Contest organized by the Aboriginal Student Centre hosted by the University of Regina. Watch this. Hello, my name is Misty Longman and today we are here at the University of Regina for the Glen Annual Memorial TP Racing Competition and we're really excited for a great event today. TP Racing has been going on with the Aboriginal Student Centre since 2008. This is the eighth event that we've hosted and this is our biggest year yet. We've had 45 competitions hosted throughout the whole day and we've had a lot of activity, a lot of high schools and a lot of elementary schools show up. So it's definitely been our biggest success today and we're very proud of how today's turning out. When you put your canvas on the side, the wind is blowing, it'll uh, kind of help you wrap it around. My name is Sheena Coops. I'm from Burt Fox Community High School in Fort Capel. This is our first year being here and we had three teams. 
mostly grade 8 students, a couple grade 10 students, so we're really excited that this could be an annual thing, that we come out every year for this. I, I like the teepee because it's like you got a bed on the outside. <laughs> And I'm hoping that this could become a, a skill that students at Burt Fox, that, that we all learn how to set up the teepee and then more importantly that we learn some of the teachings that go with, with uh, teepee raising as well. Put your material down, back away from the teepee. My name's Gailey Nanaquad and the Lake Glen Nanaquad was my dad and my sister and I are here today as well as my nieces, nephews, and uh, my aunt and my mom was here earlier and we're honoured today to support the Aboriginal Student Centre for hosting the annual uh, memorial teepee raising contest. My dad worked for the University of Regina uh, from 2005 until I think about a year or two before he passed away in, in 2011 and so it's really good. He, this was one of his highlights of the year was to come and support, was to host something like this to bring in and integrate First Nation culture with education and the education environment. Um, so he loved doing this and he was very happy on, on this day particular. He'd get up early and he'd really enjoy being here and mixing with the students and sharing um, not only with the teepee raising contest but they had hand games, face painting, so it's becoming all inclusive, family oriented here. You got 20 minutes, the sun will move three inches. That's how I know it's 20 minutes. The purpose of TB Raising was to engage our students in a, in a fun event, cultural event, a teaching tool and a way to build leadership skills and development and having it central right in the heart of the entire campus has been a really great opportunity to have our students be present, actively involved, engage other non-Aboriginal students alike and have our staff and students working together in Indigenous ways of knowing and being and ways of having fun what we're judging today, communication, cooperation, just being able to work seamlessly together as a team in being able to erect the teepee. So um, a lot of the teams have listened. There's many that have practiced. So we're quite happy watching all of them and seeing the successes. On your mark, get set, go. Each week here on ResX, we will showcase a role model which can be found in a Proud Generation calendar. I was once a recipient of the Proud Generation calendar. It really means a lot to be a recipient in here. Let's check out our first week's role model. Chanella Sert and I'm from Rolla, Saskatchewan. I'm in grade 12 and I play volleyball for the Rolo Rebels. When I found out that I was a recipient of the Proud Generation calendar, I was shocked and super excited. I guess I just felt really proud of myself and felt accomplished. After high school, I plan to go to the U of R for nursing and become an RN. This weekend, we participated in the 1A Provincials and um, we had a hard time. We only won two games and during our last game, we were down by quite a few, but we came back and we won the set because we just kept trying and didn't stop doing what we knew how to do. I would say just to never give up. Even on a hard day, you know, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel and you just need to keep trying. Aho! Uh -oh. Stay with us. More Red X after the break. Let's make 2016 the year of you. Try to exercise daily. Yes, access hyperspeed internet surfing counts. Push yourself. Binge watch an entire season of that TV show. Remember that tomorrow starts today. Once you set your PVR to record, and always feel the burn of insanely fast access hyperspeed internet. Find out more at technologytheworks.ca. 
This year marks the 10th anniversary of Access Communications TP Bingo, and we're giving you even more chances to win. Cards are just $12 and are available wherever you see the TP Bingo sign. All proceeds go to the Access Communications Children's Fund. If you're looking to have some fun, win some cash, and support a great cause, play TP Bingo, Saturdays at 5 p.m., only on Access 7. System, a new documentary featuring how our Canadian government enforced a policy where Indians had to stay on the reserve. A special screening was at the University of Regina and ResEx was there. It's hardly surprising that when Johnny McDonald, and as I say, it's not in the film, but he says in 1885, when he implements the pass system, he says the properties of the towns and cities... Uh, my name is Alex Williams, and I'm the director of the pass system. Well, it was a five-year research process, and uh, a lot of that research involved speaking with elders because the historical record um, appeared to have a lot of holes in it, a lot of questions that remained unanswered. Um, a lot of documents were missing, a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of records generally. Uh, prompted further questions. So, speaking with elders about their experiences really became the most important, both for people to understand the impact mm -hmm. of the past system on people's lives, people's families, um, but also as evidence of the system because the system had no basis in law and because the documents were destroyed it was very uh, difficult to find uh, you know a settler record of what actually happened. Alex and his, and his collaborators uh, read my book Clearing the Plains, uh, Disease, Politics of Starvation and the Loss of, of Aboriginal Life and uh, in that book there's a discussion of uh, rations and uh, the withholding of rations and forcing people to move and uh, I guess near the end is the implementation of the past system and uh, basically the undermining of First Nations people's health. Well again one of the things I was surprised at was uh, sort of the brutality and I mentioned this during the, the public discussion in the, the battle in the Saskatchewan Herald in, in Battleford in 1886 there's a, a story about a posse of white men traveling around Battleford and basically ch chasing any First Nations men and women out of town uh, and there's a description in the newspaper of a woman being caught by a posse of men dragged back to prison having her hair cut terrorized and then she's she's sent like let out of prison to go uh, you know spread the word of, of terror and uh, you know the newspaper kind of mocks her and says well an hour later not a straggler left in town so you know uh, it was brutal it was it was shocking off a very ambitious Indian agent Hater Reed is promoted to assistant commissioner in 1884 just before the resistance. In the aftermath of the events of 1885, Reed pens a document entitled, Memorandum to the Honorable the Indian Commissioner Relative to the Future Management of Indians, and in which Reed proposes that no rebel Indians get off the reserve without a pass. His boss, Edgar Dudney, replies that this should be done and insisted upon as far as is practicable. It might be thought well another year to legislate in that direction. So Reed proposes it to Dudney, who then proposes it to his boss, Lawrence Van Cugnet, who then passes it on to McDonald who signs off on the system. Except it's never legislated in the House of Commons or anywhere else. MacDonald puts in place a system he knows isn't legal.
Do you want help getting the word out about your garage sale, public event, or fundraiser? Promote for free on Access 7's community calendar. Submit online by visiting myaccess.ca slash access7, clicking on the community calendar section. Community calendar airs daily. Check your local listings for details. Bringing your community to you, only on Access 7. For this week's podcast discussion, we brought in the filmmaker of the past system. I'm Shawnee and Pete with ResX. Today, we'll be having a conversation with two filmmakers, and also Chris has joined us in the discussion. So if you wouldn't mind starting with an introduction to who you are and the film that you made, that would be great. Uh, I'm Alex Williams. I'm the director of The Pass System. I'm Candy Fox, and I'm the director of Backroads. Uh, my name is Chris Ross, and I'm publisher of ResX Media. Thank you all for joining us today in this discussion. Um, I've had a guest here at my home this um, past week, Alex Williams, and I uh, got to know each other a couple years ago um, on Facebook, of all things. I had posted a, a pass um, from the past system onto my Facebook page, and that led Alex to contact me, and we started a discussion about a film he was starting uh, to do research on and starting to film. Do you want to speak to the film, Alex? Sure. Yeah, the film is an investigative uh, look at the past system, which of course was a very restrictive uh, measure of Indian affairs that lasted over 60 years. And in essence, people could not get off reserve without a pass. And I was very honored to meet you and your father, who also is in the film. And uh, so it's those stories that are the core of the film. And then there's an anal analysis that's uh, done by a number of uh, historians and academics like yourself uh, to put the the whole um, con uh, the whole program in the context of many other uh, forms of um, oppression uh, that were you know put in place by Indian Affairs. So its intent is to really kind of understand how the past system works in concert with those other systems of control and really uh, get a sense of how it impacted people and how it continues in different ways uh, to this day and, and really, you know, getting to understand the structural means of sep separating and segregating people. And Chris, you saw the film mm -hmm. the other night. Can you tell us a little bit about your impressions of it? I, I was just like uh, amazed. Um, I guess not, not amazed, but like, like shocked, you know, shock and awe, I guess, is the best words I can describe of, you know, especially like um, the most recent, some of the most recent uh, passes um, out there was like 1969. And so that's not even far away. And so I, I thought, um, you know, it took a lot of analogies from this film especially when your dad, uh, Jacob Peet, talked about how it was always about control with the Indian agent. Mm -hmm. And then I, I look at how things are today with the current Aboriginal Minister of Affairs or Indigenous, um, is how they're still trying to, con I guess, the Indian Act is still controlling us and con still controlling our people, still controlling our bands. All three of you are involved in really trying to uh, tell a very different kind of story about Indigenous people in Canada. Um, what has led you to take up this work? For me, I think it was a way to explore my own identity. It was a way for me to like discover and make explorations and, and go into the stories of my family and who they were. and. Um, a lot of the projects that I did while I was in film school were projects about my grandmother, you know, like just her talking and telling stories. And I think that really connects me to, to who I am and where I am at in my life. Like it's, it's reaffirming almost. And um, some of the film, another film that I did that kind of touched on, you know, exploring who I am was called Being Two-Spirited. And that was an exploration into stories of people who identified with that term and why they identified with it. Thank you, Candy. Um, I've thought about this a lot. And I think, you know, one of the, the big reasons is I was shown some pretty strong examples of... Uh, in my family of people who uh, did not sit by the sidelines 
um, in times, uh, you know, of crisis, there were, um, and I was taught to examine my society and examine systems of control and power. When this story, um, you know, when I started to look into the story and there were a number of can't turn back moments where, uh, you know, meeting you and your family holds the last, one of the last passes we know of. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, your role at the University of Regina as an educator and a lead in indigenization of the university and your dad, who's the uh, first Treaty Indian member, full member of the RCMP, who protests the past system because it has no basis in law those are can't turn back moments and there were a number of moments like that thank you thank you mm -hmm. so much thank you all three of you for um, joining me today in conversation uh, Thomas King says all we are is stories and I want to thank and acknowledge all three of you for telling different kind of stories today so that we can all change that colonial relationship that we've inherited thank you for joining us on Res X Keeping with this week's theme, Indigenous History, Regina's very own Info Red, aka Brad Belgard, sings a song, I Remember, which he dedicates to all residential school survivors. This song is a collaboration with a group from Vancouver called Sister Says. They just have a new album out called Heart Placement. I recommend all of you to go on iTunes and purchase it and support some Indigenous artists. dedicated to all of us for all learning about it. I was playing outside just a little man with the world in the palm of my hand. A little kid living life with innocence. I remember everything with images. A red truck and a man in a black robe. They told my mom, call him Father Joe. So we called him Father Joe. I saw a tear from my mother's eye. I let out a cry, but I didn't know why. Truck. It had a flatbed on it and the road was rough. My hands are shaking, feeling sick to my stomach. Where are they taking us? Who could have done it? My body is nervous. Why am I leaving? What is the purpose? What is the reason? Now I'm just the last little kid looking for my mother in this life that I live all alone on the road that I'm traveling. And all I really want to do is just go home. I remember walking through the doors of the school. It was cool in September. They gave us clothes, put numbers on us when it said, this will be your name to your home in December. They put powder on my head, threw me in the shower, then lined us up for bed. They took my braid away. They took my braids away. When I see you taken away, my heart becomes displaced. With broken shadows, no time for fate. I'll never see you again. from the kids whispers across the room talking things like i hope we go home soon and this is just the first night in my life i think this is my worst night i'm just a kid and the test of my will when we hear the jingle of the keys with all lies still i close my eyes just to block away i'm living with an image on a cloud that i'm sitting i want to fly away i want to fly away i can't cry i can't sleep they even took away your kid for trying to speak i remember thinking that we'd never get to meet then my mind drifted off and fell asleep my first morning brought food i couldn't eat it if we did it we get punished in a seat this is the life that i had to live in residential school as a kid now it's 60 years later looking back kind of funny how my mom remembers that all the little things that i can't forget but i'm thankful that i made it every step and through the years, confronted so many fears, my feelings have been adjusted, I'm telling it to your ears. The elements of my tears, the sentiments of the years that I spent with my peers, I remember. I taken away, my heart becomes displaced, with broken shadows, no time for fame.
indigenous history, mm -hmm. past system, to very powerful mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that we showcased on ResX today, showcasing the history. What do you think? Oh, you know, I have to admit, Cadmus, I honestly didn't know about the past system until I watched the documentary. That's yeah. so powerful to know what had gone on in our, in our past. Right? For sure, there's many people out mm -hmm. there that just do not know the mm -hmm. reality of what happened. My mother, my, I'm the youngest of nine. My wow. mom and dad remember the past system. Are you serious? We're just little wee kids. Do you see the effects of that? Oh, you know, there's some intergenerational kind of trauma, maybe not trauma, but things that, you know, that we kind of talk about, mm -hmm. but um, it's it's really good. It, it allows me to understand. Yeah, I didn't sure. understand the real effects of it till I went to university exactly. and I start taking classes. And then, you know, at kind of one point, you almost get angry at the history just because mm -hmm. you're so fresh to it. But then after a while, you're like, I want to become the solution. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to go and linger and dwell on those that old pain of it now. What are we going to do with it? Yeah, right? you can really hear the passion mm -hmm. and the understanding and info read and I remember. Yes, that's excellent. Excellent way of like sort of showing our, our history, but also the message behind it is knowing our history is very healing. For sure. Mm -hmm. When you talk to a lot of the survivors, uh, the, the generation now, we're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the teachings and we're going to make it a better world. Mm -hmm. Here's to a brighter future. What a great episode. Until next time, keep fit, have fun. We'll see you soon. Thank you.